Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, Ray here again. Uh, if you want to subscribe, it's Nitro Kyo Show. Uh, today what I'm going to do is talk about introduction to uh, a nitro buggy. And for anyone who wants to get into it, I hope that this video will give them some insight and help them. A lot of things to talk about, so let's get started. First thing, whenever you get a nitro buggy, obviously, read your manual, okay guys, front to back, alright, before you take one of these cars out and do something you'll regret. Uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is basically the three ways that these vehicles can start, okay. You have, on some of them come with pull starts, which will be on this side of the engine, you'll pull it, not too hard, because you will break it, okay. Uh, the next way that they start is with a drill start, okay, which means there's a backing plate on the back of the engine. You'll use a regular type of drill with the insert that goes into your backing plate and you'll start it that way. Okay, the next way they start is they sit on a metal box called a starter box or a bump box and you'll have a rubber wheel that will come up through the bottom of your car and engage your flywheel. You'll push the car down and that will start your car. It's called a starter box or a bump box. The racers like using those because they're quicker uh, than messing around with the other ways. Uh, most pull starts you have to take the body off to start it. And uh, drill starts you're you know trying to finagle in there with a drill and uh, for regular use it doesn't matter but you know when you're racing at a track they want to be everything as quick as possible. Okay, a starter box uh, and a drill start, they also, you know, they work off of uh, like NICAD batteries. Most starter boxes will take two NICAD batteries, uh, 7.2 volts. Uh, okay, how to start these, okay. Uh, when you get a nitro car, you have to break the engine in. You can't just take these out of the box and start romping. Usually what I do is I'll idle it up on blocks through three tanks of gas, drive it the fourth tank in the yard, and then by the fifth tank you can start to tune it. Okay, and by the fifth tank you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, so let's talk now um, about how these, these start to begin with. You have a glow plug down in the center here okay and you're gonna put a glow igniter down onto that the glow igniter lights the other side of the plug okay and gets it hot it hits the nitromethane starts a fire burning once that it starts you remove your glow igniter and you're good to go if you don't prime these engines the proper way you'll never get it started and uh, if you have like I have clear uh, gas line you'll be able to see uh, the gas go through okay two different ways to prime it one you can hold your finger over the exhaust and use whatever starting method you have if you want to pull start it a few times you'll see the gas come through if you don't block the exhaust and get back pressure these don't have fuel pumps guys so you have to create back pressure if you don't want to especially if you have a pull start and you don't want to pull it a million times what I can uh, suggest is you take off this line here your exhaust line off of the exhaust pipe and you gently blow through it and you'll see the gas go through as soon as it gets to the carb just about in a little bit you stop or you'll, you'll flood your engine also you want to have your uh, carburetor open about a millimeter uh, if you don't have it open a little bit, it won't start either if the carb is completely closed. A lot of guys will put their methods on for starting and then they'll use their throttle on their controller uh, to get it going that way. But you have to prime it. Okay. Uh, how you can check for a bad glow plug. If you're, uh, m most of the time if you have trouble with these vehicles, it's a bad glow plug. You take the glow plug out hold it up, put your glow igniter on it, and look at the bottom of the plug um, and you'll see if it obviously turns uh, orange and lights up or if it doesn't. Uh, glow plugs don't last forever so you do have to change them. 
Uh, when you start noticing the car won't stay idling by itself, uh, usually that's a telltale sign, a little loss of power, spitting and sputtering. Okay. Uh, one of the most important things on a nitro car is the air filter. The outside of this air filter doesn't look like it has any oil on it because it doesn't. It's a pre-filter. The actual air filter is underneath it. You have to keep them clean guys and you have to keep the uh, filter underneath oiled with uh, the proper oil you get at your hobby shops. I usually will clean it with uh, dish detergent dry it with a hair dryer or let it air dry put it in a bag with a couple of drops uh, take like a Ziploc bag and rub it around inside uh, the air filter get it oiled up and you can put it back on and you put you can also clean your pre-filter okay the pre-filter doesn't get oil only the filter underneath and you don't want to sop it with oil because if you do it could cause your engine to run rich okay uh, you have three needles okay I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. This is uh, the needle on this side of the carburetor. Okay, it's your high speed needle. Okay, that is going to control your rich and your lean mixture. If you turn it uh, counterclockwise, uh, when the, the screw is backed out, it's going to run rich. When you turn it in, you're going to lean it out. Okay. This one is going to control your speed from mid okay, to top end. The other needle is called your low speed. and uh, It is on the end of your carburetor linkage. It's a screw. It goes straight in. If you look straight in on the car body, you'll see it. The other screw is usually down underneath right here, underneath this part of the carb, and that is your idle adjustment. Okay. Usually when you get these from the factory, you don't mess with any of those. It'll usually, a good company, it'll be set up where it'll start, run, leave it running rich through your, your uh, three tanks of idling, even into your fourth, and then you can start to lean it out. These needles are very, very sensitive. Very small turns. Eight turns at a time, if that. Okay. Uh, and then you got to clean the motor out, give it some gas, gun it, and, cl and clear it out. Usually, once you get the low speed needle set, you don't have to mess with that too much. The low speed is going to control your from uh, a dead stop, okay, uh, to mid, and then this one takes over from mid to top end, okay. Like I said, the most important thing with these uh, is the air filter. That's the life that keeps this thing from getting sand and dirt you don't want these ever to be run without a filter on there okay uh, most of these vehicles all come with adjustable shocks they have shock bodies filled with uh, oil they have a, a gearbox in the front a gearbox in the rear and a center uh, transmission okay or center differential okay you can fill those with either grease or with uh, silicon oils depending uh, what you want to do. Racers use silicon because they can empty it out and change it quick at the tracks. If you're backyard bashing you might want to consider grease. It'll last longer and you don't have to maintenance it as much. Okay. Uh, these have clutch shoes that are fairly easy to change. You just pop your motor out with a couple of screws. Take your clutch bell off and you have your clutch shoes uh, under there. They come in aluminum and plastics and uh, other materials also. I use aluminum and you shouldn't have to mess with those too often unless one broke or something. Uh, they're very easy to change. Uh, but we'll talk about that probably in another video. You have your uh, uh, two servos on these. One servo controls your steering and the back servo here is going to control a dual. It's going to control uh, your throttle and it's going to control your braking. Okay. Uh, if you're not going to use these vehicles for a while, it's a good idea to take out your glow plug and you can get at a hobby shop usually a three pack of like a Loctite uh, run after oil and air filter oil. Okay, if you're not going to use these for a while, it's recommended 
that you take the glow plug out and drop a few drops of run after oil in there move your flywheel manually so the piston goes up and down with the glow plug out swish it around and put your glow plug back in and also a few drops down the carburetor these cars will start fairly easy with a pull start and with a drill start when you're breaking them in the hardest way to start these when you're breaking them in is using a bump box because the rubber wheel will slip on the flywheel the flywheel will get caught you usually have to put a screwdriver on the flywheel and you have to move that uh, because it will get stuck when you're only when you're breaking it in also whenever you break in with a bump box uh, or any of the other methods it's always a good idea to put some run after oil down inside uh, the engine before you break it in put uh, your glow plug in and don't fully tighten it if you if you leave it a little loose it'll kill some of the compression and it will start easier also you could wrap the head with a little tin foil and you can heat this up with a hair dryer good and hot before you try starting it and that will loosen everything up and make it start a little easier but they will get jammed up when you're using a bump box when you're pull starting or drill starting they usually don't get bound up because you're using more power okay uh, they come with different engine sizes this is a point twenty one there's point twelves point eighteens point twenty eights obviously the bigger they get the more faster they go and the more torque they produce okay uh, let's see what else can we talk about um, so basically when you get one of these vehicles read your manual really well okay I explained to you how to break them in run after oils, air filter oils, uh, how to prime them remember you can prime it by holding your hand over the exhaust and starting you know the gas to get sucked through that way or you can take off the easiest way is to just pull this off uh, your exhaust pipe this line here not the one on the carb and blow through it and you'll see the gas go through as soon as it gets there you stop okay and that's pretty much it guys uh, it's just a basic uh, this is the first video I'm going to put out I don't know if I'll need a, a second video uh, but generally the maintenance on these is changing glow plugs keeping your air filter oil uh, cleaned you know putting new oil and cleaning that dish detergent uh, always drain out your gas tank uh, you can use a, like a gas a sucker to suck that out a bulb when you're done don't leave gas in the gas tank and uh, so far let's see that's about it all that I have really to say at this point I think I gave you a pretty good start of what these cars are all about uh, so uh, I might be putting out a second one with uh, a couple more things but I think I covered as much as I'd like to cover in this video so I hope that this helps you guys out gives you a little bit of insight and uh, we'll talk to you soon thanks for watching